Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Take Traction Show. That's right, you know where you are. You're with Christian O'Prea and Charlie Center, and it's time to do some e commerce digital marketing talk. Today, we've got an awesome episode for you um, all about chatbots. Uh, and this is a really interesting topic because it's kind of today we're digging into the future of e commerce and the future of marketing. What is going to be the potential with chatbots? Obviously, you're probably aware that they've already made some kind of impact in the world and, and people are starting to apply them more and more. People are starting to use them more and more. Um, we're going to talk about the Facebook chatbot uh, that you can use, kind of the native Facebook chatbot and, the, and different tools that you can use to apply uh, or create your own chatbots within Facebook. Uh, and we're going to talk about the, the future, where it's really going, uh, a little bit of insight into how the Chinese are using chatbots and perhaps that's where we're going in the Western world here. Um, so it's going to be a really interesting episode to kind of just uh, speculate on, on some of the different use cases of chatbots now, the ways you can be using them now, right now in your business, and perhaps some of the ways in which you should be preparing to use them in the future uh, or in the very near future, because this is something that's happening right now. Now, I have another big apology to make again. Uh, as with last week, I have unfortunately managed to screw up the recording, and for some reason, I was recording through my laptop top microphone instead of my uh, my my proper kind of semi-professional microphone which is just one extreme to the other I'd rather use my headphone microphone than my laptop microphone but there you go we've ended up with the poorest quality audio you could possibly imagine rather than the best which is what I'm always aiming for so I do apologize for that I hope you can bear through uh, the entire the entire episode today because there's some really good gems in there I have tweaked the audio a little bit to try and improve it as much as possible so hopefully it will still sound fairly decent you can obviously hear the difference between Christian and my voice um, but nonetheless enjoy the episode I hope you can stick through the bad audio uh, and thanks for joining as always I'll catch you on the other side bye for now so uh, before we start what do you think about that freaking cryptocurrency stuff <laughs> that's that's going well <laughs> um, oh, it's so difficult man. I mean, oh, man it's difficult because you came in at a really bad time um, well I, I think I'm, I'm, it's not a bad time to be honest because I've, I've mm, half of of what I bought was when everything dropped. So, so well, but it hadn't dropped. Well, yeah, but it was only a tiny drop because it, it not a tiny drop. I'm, we're talking twenty thousand dollars per Bitcoin, and then ten thousand um, dollars. That's not a small drop, I guess. Yeah, but when did you buy? It wasn't it when 10, it was ten was it? nine thousand yeah. dollars for the Bitcoin. Um, yeah, I think just generally, I think I bought Bitcoin or oh, I bought cryptocurrencies really late anyway. Um, yeah, I said to myself before Christmas that by the end of January I'd pull all of my money out of cryptocurrencies because I suspected that they would be releasing new laws in different countries that would seriously damage the value of cryptocurrencies yeah and the truth is, I should have just pulled it out sooner. I should have pulled out by the end of the year, and then I would have saved all my money um, because that did start happening. But it happened earlier than I expected it to. Did you make um, any uh, profit from it? This is the thing. I'm not bothered because I've still made a load of profit so, so far. So, did you pull out? No. Not yet. No, I still think it will go back up. Ah, uh, there we but go. But honestly, I don't know how. Don't know how long for. I, so I want to. I will. Um, if if I can get if if cryptocurrencies go back up again, I will pull my money out of Ethereum and Litecoin, just because they're the kind of, as far as I'm aware, anyway, they're the kind of ungoverned cryptocurrencies that really just depend they're not being controlled or well, they're being controlled by the markets themselves whereas you've got companies organizations like dash and ripple which are really playing a big part in controlling the way their currencies are used and the price of their currencies ripple's really trying to control the price of the currency which is good because they don't want all that volatility um yep. so i'd probably leave my money in those and take my money out of the other ones um but here's the thing they dropped like hell 
when everything dropped, they dropped even further. What do you mean? And, uh, and faster. Well, Ripple dropped the most. Dropped 50% or 60%. In... Yeah, because it had grown the most. Yeah. So it's not, it's not a big deal. You know, everyone's complaining because Ripple's on like $1.20, $1.50. Well, yeah. I bought it when it was at 70 cents. So I'm still, I'm still doubling my money. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's a waiting game. I, I think by the end of the year, everything will get sta stabilized. It's not like with cryptocurrencies, this didn't happen before. Drops like this keep happening and they will happen because oh, yeah. it's a volatile market. They'll continue At least to, till now. They'll continue to vary as well. Yeah. So, it's, normal, uh, you you know, it's a waiting game. To me, it's a waiting game. It's, uh, you know, you don't want to make any rash decisions. That's why a lot of people pull out and that's why some other, some other people win. Well, it's, and that's the problem. <laughs> the pulling out is what causes the prices to go down. Exactly. Every, everyone starts pulling out. All, basically, all investors are starting to pull out their money because they're thinking, no, this isn't a safe investment anymore. I can't do this. Um, and that causes the prices to continue going down. Yeah. So I don't know what's going to happen with it. Um, and I think a, a lot of people influence with fake news, uh, influence the market with freaking fake news. Oh, massively. That, uh, yeah, get massively. Picked up by other big companies, new, uh, news companies. And it all goes to shit. You know, investors start pulling out. Anyway. Yeah, yeah big time. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, I don't it's fucked know. up, but who knows? I don't know, have if I lose, I lose. <laughs> I don't have enough knowledge on it. I just kind of make guesses. And yeah, again, it's one of those. I'm just leaving my money there at the moment. And um, I'm just going to see what happens. And here's a really good example, right, of why I don't play around with things. I've got a friend who's an economist. Yep. And he decided to buy some cryptocurrencies. I'm not sure which ones, but I know he started with Ripple. Um about a month or so after I first got involved with it. Mm -hmm. And when this last, the last big crash or correction happened a couple of weeks ago, he decided that he was going to sell all of his, all of his cryptocurrencies to protect his profits, he said. And then he set up a bunch Say of... Say that again? Because uh, you've... you've to protect his profits. Again? To protect his profits. All right. And then so he, he pulled out to pr protect his profit. Yeah, and then he set up a load of alarms to purchase when it started going back up again. So he wanted to basically like protect his profit. Basically, wanted to sell high and buy low. Mm -hmm. Well, he sold high. He sold once it was already correcting. Once it was already going down. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, his alarms that he had set up to let him know when the markets were regaining some strength again, they went off in the middle of the night while he was asleep. So he missed them, and he woke up in the morning, and the value of his cryptocurrencies was above the value that he sold at, so he ended up losing money. Shit. And I think well, it's just not... Unless you are really able or want to dedicate yourself to it, it's just gambling. I mean, you can... You can it, it is. I mean, there, are so, there are so many techniques for predicting the markets... Um, through such extensive graph analysis but it's just at the end of the day I think it's just fucking gambling like you, you, I mean it you've is. got to seriously know what you're doing and there are people who do know what they're doing and they make a living at it it's like it's like poker in my mind right poker for the, for the most part it's a gambling game it's a risk taking it game and it's just people hoping that they're going to win a bunch of money but the elite, the the small top five percent of people who seriously know what they're doing, there is a lot of skill and tactics behind it, and they will make money. Um, yep. It's not a, it's not a gamble. It's it is very tactical, but it is only it's the not top only five gamble. It, at the end of the day, it's it is about the gamble because you know, you you know, pull all your techniques, pull everything you want. At the end of the day, any statistic won't help you if the gods of poker won't help you. <laughs> you know, um, you can no, lose. Well, well, at well uh, it, no, you know, it's close. No, I would, no, I would disagree because it's it's all judgment. It's all knowledge. You can, it's not just the predictions of the market. It's the knowledge of when the risk is high and the risk is low. Um, well, and then the way you act based on that knowledge. So in poker, that example would be... Um, 
you know, knowing what your odds are of, you know, beating, you've got so many different combination things. You've got knowing what your odds are of beating the other players on the table, knowing what your chances are to be able to bluff, um, knowing yep. whether you've got the upper hand, just based on positioning, where the position, on, your on. position on the table, um, yep. all these different things. Um, I don't play poker. I just watch. Some I kind do. Of I do. Stuff do play it. poker, and I, I do like it. But I, I've seen even the biggest poker out the players out there that make a lot of money, made, made a living out of it. Uh, you know, even Phil Helmut. I, I think you've heard of that guy. He's a big, tall bird, um, hmm. annoying little big guy, but still a good player. And even these guys, you know, they have one, two years where they go down the hill. Just because, you know, with all those techniques, everything, it's all about the, you know, <laughs> it is about the odds. But I, I don't think so. So here's a really interesting thing you should go and see. Um, so Tim Ferriss did a TV show a few years ago um, called mm -hmm. Tim Ferriss Experiment. And it was basically where he would try and learn to do something in four days. And at the end of the four days, he'd have some kind of... Um, deadline or some kind of thing event to be held accountable for so that he had to prove his skills after four days so for example right. he learns to drum right he decides to learn how to drum he does it for four days and on the fourth day he has to perform in a stadium in front of like eighty thousand people with a band on stage right Ooh. um and then he learns how to he, does, he learns how to do all kinds of stuff and one of them he learns how to play poker and the result is that on the fourth day, he has to play poker against two professionals and one semi-professional. Right. And he, the great, I mean, Tim Ferriss's whole, I mean, what's really made him so successful is deconstructing topics or skills and trying to work out the most efficient way to learn something or do anything or achieve anything. And so he'll look for, he won't ever learn a subject entirely but he'll learn the most effective things um so that he can appear to be to have learned much more than he really has and he did it with poker and so he spends three days four days training with one of the best poker players in the world who teaches him all of his skills and on the fourth day he goes and plays against the two professionals one semi-professional he beats all three of them and he's never played poker in his life you know so, and you know all of his skills, all the things he's applying to it. Anyway, it's a long story, but I think it kind of applies in the same way with day trading uh, in general and cryptocurrencies. And the the why so many people fail or end up crashing with these things, I think, is because when they when they are smart, when they are clever, things are going. They think things are going well for them, and so they let their tactics, their their logic go away from them or you know slip away from them and they end up getting carried away with emotion rather than logic and you know in poker that may be you know placing a you know carrying continued playing when you when you're when you should have called it um or when you should have folded i don't know i, re I don't know if i'm using the right terms i really have no idea about <laughs> poker. but um you know and in cryptocurrencies it's people you know taking risks that they shouldn't be taking because you get carried away you get emotional about it and it's keeping those emotions out um, which is an interesting subject because I think that applies to a lot of things. Just, it, it's so easy to get carried away. I, you know, I did it even with these cryptocurrencies. When the markets are going up, you're like, yeah, cryptocurrencies are going to rule forever. Everyone's going to make a shitload of money. Let's keep buying, keep buying. And they brought out Bitcoin Cash on Coinbase, and I just stupidly thought, yeah, it's going to go up loads. I've realised really early on that it's been that it's on Coinbase. Everyone else will realize later, and they'll all then buy it, which will make the price go up even higher. So I'll buy it now and make a load of money. And I bought it, and it just started dropping straight away, and it just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. And I've just I've lost like sixty percent of my money on on Bitcoin Cash, and it was just because That's I got really? emotional. It was just it was an emotional decision rather than a logical decision. Um, all right. Anyway, that's a <laughs> that's a different topic <laughs> for a different time. <laughs> Should we do it? Should we get into let's, the subject of today's podcast? Yes, let's do it. So, what are we talking about? Chatbots. Chatbots. And this is a topic of conversation that's it's really 
it's so difficult. And the reason I wanted to talk about it today is because I don't actually know much about chatbots, right? And I've, I've played around with using them. I've heard so many people talk about talk about how chatbots are going to be the future, right? And there's a lot of... I think this is mainly stemmed from the fact that chatbots have really taken over a lot of e-commerce in China, right? And this has been happening for probably the last five years. Chatbots are massive in China. People literally yep. do a lot of their shopping through chatbots. This, there's a massively well-known chatbot over there. I think it's WeChat. It's like one of the biggest ones. And it basically, people consider it as, as, a, as a social network. And they use it to make their purchases. It's it's kind of like WhatsApp, it's or, or even Facebook Messenger, but it's just got you know you can have your own profiles on it and all sorts of stuff. I don't really know. Um, hold on one second. I've just got to stop something on my computer. I realise I've still got running. And so they've been they've been using this as a as a way of shopping for a long time now and I think that's been making the western world believe for a long time that chatbots are going to be the new next best thing Facebook has invested heavily in their messenger app and allowing their messenger app to to have chatbots built on it um, so they obviously see the potential in it but the truth is I'm coming into this podcast without really seeing a massive amount of value in chatbots. I don't know if I believe that they are going to be the future. Um, you know, people talk well, about chat, and, and I, just one more thing. You know, chatbots and AI. It's a bit of a the lines kind of cross a bit because chatbots. Um, you know, most of the chatbots we use now are they don't necessarily use artificial intelligence. No, oh, most most of them are scripted. That's that's what I was exactly. uh, trying to say. You know, uh, uh, we got to split these uh, chatbots in. I, I guess two or three, you know, we have those scripted, we have those intelligent uh, uh, chatbots um, that are built with uh, artificial intelligence techniques. And there are some applications, um, you know, with, with a graphical interface. My, so my I, I, I've is... never, uh, just to make things crystal clear, I've never used one. I, I, I've heard of chatbots. You know, heard a lot of people talking about it. I know you uh, used a chatbot with Facebook at some point, but yeah. that's mostly everything I know about these chatbots. So it's so it's difficult, right? And I'm going to try and be um, take a neutral position here, be unbiased to try and analyze mm -hmm. this and see if we can get to some kind of conclusions. And and in researching this, so really that's why I wanted to do this podcast as well. It gave me a good excuse to really research this and look further into the potential of chatbots. So my first thing is, you know, when you when you're using so I I have this big issue, and I suppose my biggest issue. So we spend so much time as marketers building brands, right, and making a brand look beautiful and trustworthy we build a website with um you know all these symbols on it to give satisfaction guaranteed and free returns and free shipping and we make it look credible and trustworthy and we do that through the design through the graphics all these different things these things that we've been told for years or we've even proven and seen ourselves help you grow your business you know making it making your business look and feel more credible right and then e-commerce through chatbots completely removes that, right? It removes all your branding. It removes everything. You are basically in the hands of the chat messenger provider. So you suddenly, it, it feels like a massive step backwards for me in that respect. Like you're going to, how is someone going to go into a chatbot and have a little conversation. I don't care what the conversation is, but let's say the, the result is that you end up buying a product or you're trying to buy a product. Why would you be more likely to buy the product from a chatbot than you are from a website that looks much more credible? You can read the about page, you can see their location, you can see all that information you need to see. That's my biggest concern with it. You're making a good point, to be honest. And um, I think a lot of people uh, tend to... Uh, adopt chatbots because you know it lowers the costs um, of 
you know, having employees uh, for customer support or, um, you know, they, it, they do offer rapid response when it comes to chatbots, but yeah, they, yeah. where's the human touch? I, I think people, when, 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 whenever people uh, try to uh, use the, the chat box or call somebody, they don't want to talk with a robot. <laughs> this is true, right? So, but I need to point out, you're not, so your chatbots aren't just about customer service, right? That's one place, one area that chatbots can be used, but they are applicable to so many different areas. And that's something I wanted to come on to as well. So you've got your kind of customer service, um, and that could be questions or doubts that people have got. That, and that'd be like your typical chatbot that you might have on your website, a live chat window that pops up or whatever it is, whatever you use. Intercom help, can, you can do that kind of stuff. And you can have yep. program responses. Um, and it might be like, um, what's your returns policy? And then it automatically says, here's our returns policy. Click this link here to find out more or whatever. You know, yep. basic FAQ type stuff. Then you've got consumers being able to actually make purchases through an app and that's a completely different kettle of fish that's a much more complicated topic it's much more complicated you can't just have a canned response you do need some kind of you don't necessarily need artificial intelligence it's just a little bit more complex in nature yeah, i think a scripted chatbot would do it with um, let's take a, um, a, a restaurant for example you know people want to order you got your menu and you know um the, all all the list of ingredients that could go with any food. So if you yeah, have you, a scripted chatbot, then it makes it really easier uh, easy to for people to order without humor interaction. Yeah, I guess definitely, um, definitely. So that can be done, and we'll come on to some of the ways that that's being applied in a moment. And then you've got like the the other way that chatbots can be used is to help you run your business. Um, help your team stay organized, help you run your business in whatever way that may be. And so that isn't, that's not necessarily using a chatbot to improve communication between you and the consumer or your brand and the consumer, but rather to make some of your processes more efficient um, on the back end. And there are a few what different the- things that do that. Go on. All right. Um, I- I don't really uh, understand how how this would work. I mean, how would you uh, do it? So, so I'm really okay. curious. So we'll about come it. on to that. By the way, can you hear me okay? I know we had connection problems the other day. Yes. No, no, no. It's it's all good. So the first of all, so I think it's good to backtrack here. We've got we we need to notice that apps on iPhone, which is where the whole kind of concept originated, and then on the Android market and whatever. They kind of failed, really. Um, like on the whole grand scheme of things, apps are amazing, but they they really failed in terms of the way that we adopted them. Um, they, you know, they they reached much further than we could have ever expected because it was something that no one had even thought of. But in comparison to something like an internet browser, they they failed epically, and the reason is that people don't really pay much attention to their apps on their phone. Um, so often it's easier just to pull out Safari on your iPhone or Chrome on your Android or whatever it is and just go to the website of a place because we're getting better and better internet connections. And like I'll, I'll go to Amazon.com on my phone through Safari and forget that I've got the Amazon app on my phone. Um, yep. So the reality is that Something like, I don't know the actual statistics, but like 95% of time spent on apps on people's phones on average is spent on just five of the apps that they've got on their phones. So they may have like 50 apps, but 95% of their time will be spent on just five of those apps, right? You can go and look up the statistics. There's a load of information on this. I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but it it is something like that. And this this has been studied many times. So what does that mean? Um, number one, which are those apps? So the number one, I think, is Facebook. Um, and again, okay. you have to look this up. And then you've got Instagram in there. And the majority of the other ones are messenger apps. So it may just be text messages, like your normal messaging app from, from your phone, WhatsApp, um, Skype, 
Facebook Messenger, whatever, Viber, all these different messaging apps. Yeah. So aside from Facebook and aside from Instagram, which we already know how to reach people on those platforms as marketers, we can do Facebook ads and Instagram ads and all that kind of stuff. We can build our social media presence and all the rest of it. You can even have a Facebook sh- shop. You know, you can you can literally have your store and your products available in Facebook. What is the other way for us to reach people in their natural environment? And logic would tell you it's through those messenger apps because people are already spending the majority of their time on these apps. Um, so I can see the logic there. I can see why it makes sense to try and reach people on their apps. And another, a further little backtrack thing before we get on some of the different applications of chatbots is the, so this is something I read today actually, and this is quite interesting. The, the, it's the origin of why um, chatbots became so popular in China in the first place. And this article I read was talking about the fact that, and it kind of makes sense to me, the fact that in China things aren't quite as transparent as you know commerce in general isn't as transparent as it is in the the western world let's say and people don't really trust small local suppliers or small local shops you know in in the western okay. world i think in the states certainly in europe you actually kind of a lot of the time you trust you'd rather go to let's put it this way you'd rather go to the local coffee shop that's been set up by some local guys because you know they're going to care about you they're passionate about their business and blah 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 rather than go to the instead of going to the local Starbucks right you want to go and support the local trade you know they're going to look after you and be really kind to you you know generally speaking that's the idea but in China it's not so much that way because there are so many people that sell products um that don't comply with um, certain kind of health and safety regulations and you may, like, people buy technology items. It may be like buying, I don't know, a fan for your house or something and that fan just suddenly blows up because everything is done <laughs> so cheaply and so poorly and there's no, there's no, there's not enough regulations or at least enforcement of their regulations in China. So yeah. people tend to have a lot more questions before they make purchases online in China, right? So customer service is massive. People want to ask loads of stuff, you know, I don't know, whatever questions they might have about their returns policies and all this kind of stuff because there are so many kind of scammy companies in China. And what that does is it causes, it overwhelms the companies and that kind of forced this necessity to have chatbots, um, which then, yeah, which then, you know, it, when, so WeChat, I think, start, was launched in 2008 and then they incorporated chatbots in 2013 or something like that. And so that incorporation of chatbots into a platform that everyone's already using to talk to their friends anyway suddenly meant that people could be on a, let's say people are on a conversation, I'm talking to you, Christian, on WeChat and yep. we say, oh, let's buy a new microphone for our podcast. And we can literally, like, in that same chat, I believe, right? If not, this is where it's going, I think. you can. We can, like, invite a chatbot into the conversation and ask the chatbot about available microphones and what their prices are and ask really? for information <laughs> and then make the purchase after getting all the information we need and we can finalize that purchase from within the chatbot. So it makes a lot more sense when you understand the the reason behind chatbots being quite so popular in China, there's a lot of necessity for them because people don't trust the the, the companies they're buying from. So that I think is really interesting. And, And at the same time, it also kind of makes me doubt the potential it has in the Western world because we don't have we we do have much more trust with local providers. Um, of course, it's not perfect, but I don't think it's anything like China, or at least like I'd expect China to be. Um, so that's interesting, and I don't know. I, I wonder. I wonder whether we will ever truly be comfortable making purchases through apps on our phones. Um, because it just feels like there's this, this or there's this this cold disconnection between you and the brand. But we'll see, we'll see. We can come onto that one again in a moment. 
So anything you wanted to add on that before I go on to these um, different applications of messengers, uh, chatbots, I mean? Um, I think human interaction cannot be completely removed. I th- I, that's, that's how I feel. That's I, uh, how I feel as a customer. I don't want to talk with a bot. I want to talk with somebody that can actually help me and help me quickly. Yeah. You know, with a chat box, you got to b- answer all those questions. If it's scripted, you know, you got to b- go through the process, the entire process. It might take you half, half, of, uh, half an hour just to get to the, where you want it uh, uh, to, uh, you know, to that answer you need. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay, then. So, you know, I agree with that. I think it's, uh, I think it's, you know, and I'm, I'm all for automation of stuff and I love the fact that technology is allowing us to automate things and it certainly is great from our perspective where it allows us to grow our business um, and have small teams you know accomplishing massive massive tasks because of the help of technology but I do agree that there has to come some point where you know we need that human interaction and no matter how advanced our AI systems get or chatbots or whatever it is we still need to speak with humans at the end of the day. Um, and, and we're a fairly long way from having completely natural human conversations with robots. Um, so until that day comes, and, and even when that day comes, I still don't think it will be fulfilling enough. I don't think it'll be satisfying enough because we won't have that trust element that we can have with, with humans. I don't know. Indeed. That's a deeper conversation, I suppose. <laughs> so let's have a little look. Um, you know, another little thing, uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm just looking at my notes here and I found one more thing before we move on to the applications of it. Um, conversion rates for e-commerce stores on smartphones are around 1.5%, right? So mobile shopping yep. is still down at like 1.5% conversion rates on average across all industries. It's a bit of a random number um, or a general number. And then on desktop, we've got nearly 4.5, right? So mobile conversion rates are still low in comparison to uh, desktop conversion rates. They've grown a lot, but it's still low. Um, so and Here's the problem. A lot of the traffic comes from mobile yes, searches. And that's a problem. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I see a lot of um, e-commerce websites that get a lot of traffic and more than 60, 70 percent of the traffic it comes from mobile. So I guess that, that, that that's a problem, to be honest. Yeah. Less people buy from their phones, but a lot of people or more people start searching for products on their mobile phones. Yeah, that's so true. And especially, so, when, you know, it's so easy to, to to capture people's attention from platforms like Facebook. And people spend a lot, of, a lot of time on Facebook on their phones. So it's, you know, finding a way to really easily utilize that traffic and increase your conversion rate. So I, I do think in that respect, chatbots have got a lot of potential to increase mobile conversion rates um generally speaking so not just not just saying conversion rates on websites but mobile conversion rates in general can be improved with these chatbots um all right so let's let's go into these applications then and and let's start with e-commerce because i think it's you know it's the most apparent one and e-commerce at least what i mean is kind of uh consumer to vendor interactions um, and facilitating the purchasing process for consumers, or or, or at least taking that, that pressure off of your hands um, as as an e-commerce store owner. So there, there isn't. I mean, you, so there. Facebook Messenger is certainly leading the way with a lot of this stuff, right? Facebook Messenger opened up a few years ago to having like custom chatbots be built and, and placed within Facebook Messenger so any company can build their own f- uh, chatbot and utilize Messenger as their platform for using that chatbot, which means that since Facebook Messenger, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what the stats are, but it's like millions, if not billions of people are on Facebook Messenger already. Um, and... It, so it's a super simple way to be able to get your chatbot in front of people. It's not like you're creating your own chatbot out of thin air and then trying to get someone to download your chat app so that you can communicate with them. So 
Facebook Messenger really seems to be the platform at the moment. We, uh, what's it called? Not we, um, WhatsApp. Uh, WhatsApp hasn't allowed API access to their brand, to their to their software yet. So people, that, you know, it's not open for chatbots. You cannot create a chatbot on WhatsApp as it stands, as far as I'm aware. So WhatsApp is kind of out the window. And that's surprising because WhatsApp is massively adopted as well. It must be, I don't know what the numbers are. Okay, there's a lot of potential with, with WhatsApp. I mean, big time. I, I, out of 10 people, I think eight use WhatsApp. Yeah. I've recently started using WhatsApp, but it has been suggested by one of my, my friends. And I realized, I, all of a sudden, I realized everyone was using it. <laughs> everyone is using it. Everyone's everyone. using it. Um, it's really, it, yeah. It's, it, it, uh, certainly in Europe, it's really taken over. I know it's a bit behind. It's not necessarily as popular in the States, but it's still um, it's still growing over there. In South America and Central America, it's really big because a lot of the times the 3G or 4G is, is really poor over there. Oh, no, sorry, the the actual phone signal, the phone the network coverage is really bad, so they actually use their 3G better so they can they, they might not be able to send a text me, text message, but they can send a WhatsApp. Um, I know I have that a lot when, when I'm in Argentina. That's a weird I, one. I have um, Movistar network and i just never have coverage yet so everyone's making phone calls and sending messages through whatsapp so it's growing um and it could be it could be massive with whatsapp i'd be interested i wouldn't be surprised if whatsapp in like a year or two years came out with some massive new update and it was like now we're doing chatbots you can buy from your favorite e-commerce stores on whatsapp and it like oh, it would just change the world i think in that respect because it is such an adopted um an adopted platform but again facebook messenger is still highly adopted so there's a lot of potential there um and well trusted yeah exactly you can go and sign up for some free services at the moment uh you've got chat fuel and many chat uh they're pretty similar from what i can gather i've used many chat i haven't used chat fuel i've done a bit of research on this and it seems they've both got their pros and cons they are both really at the kind of forefront of chatbot you know chatbot development without any technical knowledge or any coding or programming required so it's just a real nice easy way for you to you can you can go in there set up an account for free on both of them i should point out and build these automations essentially it's kind of like email marketing email automation uh, software so you can build these flows these sequences where with conditions, if else statements, you know, if someone does this, send them this message. If they do the other thing, send them another message. And you can build out these beautiful flows to control the way you communicate. And you could, if you really wanted to build some complicated chatbots that were almost natural for people to talk to, you really could with these things. You'd have to put in a lot of work, but if you're willing to, then you could actually make some really cool chatbots with, with just many chat or chat fueled. So those are a couple of cool ways to get started. Right. Um, the other cool thing with, at least with ManyChat, I'm not sure about uh, ChatFuel. I think it's just a messenger thing, a Facebook messenger thing in general, actually, is you can get subscribers. So you can also release like uh, campaigns, as, as you would an email campaign, send out an email blast to everyone. You can send out a Facebook messenger blast to everyone. That's kind of cool as well, but that's not, that's not a chatbot. But these are just some cool features of these tools. Um, so, so I know you've been using uh, one of the days. Uh, which one was it? ManyChat. 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 Yeah. So, yeah. was it successful? Did you did uh, did you see any uh, interaction with the, the chatbot? Any conversions? So here's the thing. Yes, I did. And the way I used it was it wasn't the most complex of uh, ways to use it. Right? I ran a Facebook campaign and ad, 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 advert a lead generation campaign oh no it wasn't it was a remarketing campaign with a banner ad that when people clicked on the banner ad it would open their messenger app and send them an automated welcome message and that's all set up from within facebook but then yeah, you would, can set that up from facebook yeah and then people would reply to this message this initial welcome message in the messenger chat and i then had many chat take over from that point with this chatbot with this automation so it was basically uh -huh. trying to it was offering people a discount code if they went and purchased within the next 48 hours and if they wanted the discount code they had to ask for it in the chat and then the chat was like 
okay, here's your discount code, congratulations to unlocking it, and they just had a, a little basic conversation. The cool thing about this is that chat apps have a massive open rate, right? You can get like 80, 90%, 95% open rates with messenger apps, whereas you're looking at a 30% open rate on a good day with email. So, yeah. you know, and you think about it, how many times do you leave a message unread on your phone for more than, like, I don't know, more than 14 days? You don't do it. You just, because you, you hate that little red dot that's like, you've got an unread message and you're just like, I've got to read it. I've got to read it for God's <laughs> sake. So you get rid of it. Um, but at least you read it, you open it. Uh, you have to do yeah. something with it. Whereas email is just so saturated now. We get so many emails every day that, we just kind of don't see, we don't, when we get an email, we don't think, oh, it must be an important email. I must check every email. When we get a message, when we get a WhatsApp message or a text message or something, we think, oh, it's a friend. It, it, you know, it's someone who may need an answer from me or might be asking me a question or whatever. Which, yeah, I think yeah, people became immune to emails at some, at some so, point because, because of the uh, spam rate. <laughs> exactly. So that raises the issue. Is it just going to make... You know, if WhatsApp was to open to companies, is it just going to make people become immune to messenger apps? Right? Is it At just going to point, become, I think... you know, and how are they going to regulate that? Because we're going to, the consumer will, if, you know, if we just want apps that are simple to talk to our friends, then we're going to start getting upset. You know, if, if I start, if WhatsApp became like my emails are, you know, I, I already struggle to keep up with all my WhatsApp messages. Like, I, I'm the kind of person that I'll leave it two days before I reply to someone. But I try really hard to keep up with them. If I'm then getting a load more extra messages that are just marketing messages or random chatbots trying to talk to me, not even real people, it's going to destroy my communication with my friends. And I will, I'll go back to text messaging. Um, so okay. that's, you know, that's an interesting way to look at it. I really don't know. Honestly, at some point, Facebook. I, I think. I think Facebook would would have two chat sections. Two, two. One for the companies and one only for your friends. It's either that or they'll they'll go extinct. Yeah, I don't know. I think. I, don't, I mean, it's working at the Who moment. Knows? So the the cool thing about it at the moment is that you kind of you kind of control it with Facebook, right? A no. chatbot doesn't just start talking to you randomly. You can go to if you're on Facebook and you're browsing around and you see an ad that you like and you're on your phone right you're lying in bed yep. at like 11 o'clock at night and you see an advert for something you're like oh it's this this um, face lotion I need some face lotion that looks really nice and organic and like a really high quality cream let me click on that ad. so you click on that ad and it can automatically open up the messenger app for you in your phone so then you're starting a conversation with them and you're in control, right, as the consumer. You've opened up the Messenger app by clicking on the ad. It's not just randomly spammed your inbox or your Messenger app. Indeed. And so you can then have this conversation with a chatbot and it can show you the products that you, it thinks you'll be interested in and you can end up buying a product all within maybe you know 90 seconds of clicking on this ad from your phone nice and easily. So well, it works. Well, this brings me to another question so what if people start using the clickbait bait technique and you know a lot of people pick up this technique and then they spam you like crazy well you that's another you'll risk. get penalized in a day if we're talking about facebook ads here your relevancy score will be massively low because your conversion rate will be low so it, you, you just won't be able to do it it won't be profitable to just do that so i think i think a lot of those things a lot of precautions are in place to stop that stuff from happening but it's all it's okay. all a possibility at the end of the day we, we really don't know um so that's you know many chat and chat fuel they're two great tools that you can go and use to start building chatbots now and you should you should go and experiment with this stuff and test it out i did and i find it really fun and it's really interesting to use remember you've got amazing open rates um and attention. People are engaged much more than they are with email or whatever else it may be. And it allows you to give quick responses to people. Someone may have just found this lotion brand, found your lotion brand on Facebook and have some questions about your shipping. And you may, may be able to solve their problem super quickly 
while they're still lying in bed um, without you doing a thing. And that's because you've just taken the time to build up. You know, it might just be building a chat bot on many chat with your frequently asked questions, right? So that's a great place to start. Do that and let people start testing it. Um, so there's no reason why you shouldn't really. They're free accounts. Go and start playing around with it and see what's possible. It takes no coding knowledge or any experience or skill to be able to do it. So you might as well just go and play around. The okay. next thing in e-commerce with regards to uh, kind of consumer interactions with your brand is, or at least the most, the, the biggest one that popped out to me is Shopify's adoption of Messenger, Facebook Messenger as an e-commerce channel, right? So Shopify years ago, uh, well, well, probably a couple of years ago, uh, one of their conferences said that they were not necessarily trying to become the biggest e-commerce platform in the world with the most features. That wasn't their objective. They'd had kind of a little bit of a pivot and decided that what the what Shopify is about is allowing you to... I can't, I'm not going to give it... I'm not going to do it justice because I can't remember the exact word, but it was something like allowing you to feature your brand across as... sell across as many channels as possible. So be like the one-stop shop to sell on as many channels as possible. So... That might be selling on Amazon, selling on your e-commerce store, having a Facebook store, and all these other things. All right, so being able to sell through all these different channels from one integrated unit so that you can log into your dashboard and see all the sales you made from Facebook, from your Facebook store, from your website, from your Amazon store, from eBay, whatever it is. I don't know if they do eBay, but that kind of thing. And since that's their goal, I think it's super interesting that they adopted Facebook Messenger as uh, one of those channels that you can sell your products through, right? And so you can now, pretty much at the click of a button, create your own chatbot if your store is on Shopify, right? You can just decide to sell certain products on Facebook Messenger, and then you'll have the coolest little chatbot that will allow people to like browse through Carousel. You can, they can say like, it will say to you, like, what are you looking for? And you can say, mm, lotion, and it will come up with all the available lotions, and you can browse through them. And this is all within Facebook Messenger, and you don't really? have to do anything. You just have to kind of configure it from in Shopify. Um, and that's made it, that's made it uh, really so easy to do it. And I haven't, I haven't spent enough time playing around with this option. It's something that I actually really want to start doing now and testing out. I think it really depends on the product that you're selling. But it it can really you know it's like, I think the whole point of this is do you ever get that feeling now where you go to purchase something from a shop that you've bought from before and you've got an account I get this with Amazon all the time and you go in and you like you add it to your shopping cart and then you go to your shopping cart and it's like you click one button and it's like thank you for your purchase and you're like shit did I buy it already how the fuck there did that go. happen how did I manage to <laughs> buy this thing so quickly. I wanted to buy it, but that was really quick. So I, I think chatbots are, are going to facilitate that. Basically, just taking, like, remove, like, making people purchase things before they have a moment to doubt their purchase. You know, like, they're just browsing, like, oh, I kind of like this lotion on Facebook. And suddenly they're in the Messenger app, and then they're like, oh, yeah, I really want to buy that ocean. It says pay now. And you're like, pay now. Oh, shit, I just bought it. Oh, oh, well, well I wanted it anyway. You know, <laughs> so I think it's going to make it really streamlined for people to make purchases. Um, so that's something I want to test out. Another area of chatbots, and this is where I this is where I actually think chatbots are going to be most effective, and it's not to do with consumers at all. It's to do with supporting the team or supporting you as a store owner um, through the use of chatbots and there there are I'm in, in order to kind of explain this I'm just going to go through some of the available chatbots I found uh, and explain what they can do um, to give people a better idea here so the first one is one called growthbot you can find it at growthbot.org I'll put it in the show notes um, I'm just going to read it from the top here we've got Growthbot is a chatbot for marketing and sales or anyone that's working on growing a business like startup folks. 
It connects to a variety of marketing systems like HubSpot, Google Analytics and others and databases and gives you quick, easy access to information and services. Basically, what you can do is you can go onto GrowthBot on Slack or on Messenger or wherever you need it. I feel maybe it's just Slack. I think it's about... No, on Messenger or Slack and maybe some other places as well. And you can ask it questions for research. Like some of the examples here, it says, um, what software does HubSpot.com use? And GrowthBot will tell you. It will give you it will almost instantly give you a list of all the stuff that it uses. It says here, Salesforce, Google Universal Analytics, Google Analytics, HubSpot, uh, Optimizely, Perfect Audience, Wistia. Right. So suddenly you get in like seconds, you get th this chatbot assists you in doing your research. Another question: Show me small to medium business law firms in Boston that use Google Apps. And it comes back with a list of ten small or medium businesses. Uh, or law firms in Boston that use Google Apps, and it gives you a list of them right there. Um, so I think that's really cool, and that shows a completely different perspective for how chatbots can really. So empower. would you say that this is an intelligent chatbot, not a scripted one? I don't. So I, I, uh, let's see. What's the description for artificial intelligence? I would say before we look this up, that artificial intelligence has to be something that can improve its abilities and re retain information and learn from that information or make improvements to its system based on the information it's received. Now, just a, a really well-configured or scripted chatbot does not necessarily have to have artificial intelligence, in my mind. That would be my, my definition of it. What would you say? Uh, I, I guess... It, it... Although it's co complex, it's really complex, I still think it's not AI, it's scripted. Exactly. So, so I'd call this scripted. <laughs> um, AI is defined as the study of internal, uh, any, de any device that perceives its environment and takes actions that maximize its chance of success at some goal. So no. I don't think so. It's just scripted. But it's still a really cool chatbot that's going to make your life easier, right? It's going to allow you Indeed. to do quick, easy research. Again, you're still going to have the problem of, do I trust this chatbot? Do I trust the information it's getting? Because it's not been performed by a human being. I don't know. Are you going to get, are you going to have doubts? Are you going to have concerns? Yeah, probably. I don't know. That's a really cool tool. Growthbot.org. Um, Another one, Stand Up Bot, and this is for Slack. So basically, this is kind of like a feature that they have in Basecamp. So I can't remember. I've never used Basecamp myself, but um, I know that in Basecamp there's a feature where it can ask people to, at the end of the day, to write down what they've achieved in that day or something. So everyone has to write down five things or something like that. And you can have that set so that all your team has to fill out that stuff. With oh, wow. this chatbot called standupbot.com you can basically add it as an app to your slack channel and it will then go through every morning or evening or whenever you set it up you can have it ask each of your team members one by one so it will like do at christian um what are you what do you want to achieve today and then you can then reply to the chatbot and write down all of your things you're going to do for the day. And then it will say, at Charlie. So you'll only be notified when it's you and everyone can write down their stuff when they've been notified. And this stand-up bot will then go off and create a report for you as the business owner so you can see what your team's saying. Um, it just sounds like it works really cool. It makes me think of when we used to work at the agency and you know we always wanted to know what everyone had been up to throughout the day because we were working remotely this would be really cool for it to automatically send messages to people and capture that information and present it in a nice way. I'm sure it does more than that, this thing, but that's all it kind of says on the homepage. Um, so it looks pretty cool. Right. I think that's a cool thing again. You know, it assists you. It makes your life a little bit easier. So it's really, in, this, in that sense, it's kind of, it really is just software, but it's being utilized in, utilized in the, through the medium of a chat, right? Um, and in order to use chat, you have to use language uh, to communicate with something, whether it's a machine or a human being. So that kind of, that's what the chatbot is, you know. 
um, it's utilizing software through language. So that's a cool. One. So I'm I'm, I'm interested in um, in chatbots like you know clever bot right you know uh, you can talk with that bot it 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 talks to you it uh, it talks back to you What's and clever bot? you can have a decent conversation about it with clever bot i haven't seen that. clever bot i'm going to send you the link it's cleverbot.com and you can ask the bot anything and it'll uh, it uses yeah, artificial intelligence i'll tell you now Yeah, so clever Cleverbot is a chatbot web application that uses artificial intelligence to communicate with humans. Rollo Carpenter launched it in 1997. That's cool. And it has since gone through a number of redevelopments. So I'm I'm really interested in in the appliance of such uh chatbots within e-commerce. Is there any bot chatbot at currently in the world that can be uh, implemented into an e-commerce website. So that's I guess I, I don't I think the answer is no. I don't think there is one that can be like literally like talking to a human being and just have a chat with it and um and you know like And it's a dangerous field, isn't it? <laughs> it is dangerous because you it just basically puts so much in control of the people behind the chatbot. But it, like if you say it like that, it would be amazing. Imagine chat imagine Google was like a chatbot, right? Imagine yep. you go to google.com, you go to the homepage and in the search bar you type something but instead of showing you a results page, it kind of gives you the answers to what you want. Literally Google deciding what the answers are in in a chatbot mechanism and it could do that by literally taking its answers from the internet, I don't know. But if you said, "Hey, um are there any um are there any I don't know, are there any uh um lotion let's <laughs> I keep going back to this lotion example are there any lotion exam are there any lotion um stores in the UK um and it could come back and say yes we found that there are one there are 500 stores in the UK what kind of lotion are you looking for and you could say well i need some facial lotion because i've got dry skin you could say i found these products um for dry skin and then you could browse through the products and make the purchase boom as quickly as that Yeah. So I just asked uh, the the clever bot where can I find some lotion and he replied it replied on the internet <laughs> on the internet right so <laughs> so yeah could that happen maybe but then you're going to want to you, if you're going to if you come across the product that you think you want you're then going to want to do some research on the brand behind it you don't want to just give your money over to anyone so how can it work i really don't know that would work if it was like Amazon for example and you know you trust Amazon so you're not you don't care about finding out more about the brand you just want to use a chatbot to find the products you want and make a purchase based on price or, or quality or the reviews or something that could work in a chatbot but like a chatbot for everything for the whole of e-commerce like on the internet i don't know if that's going to be possible we'll see we'll see Indeed. Another really cool application for chatbots is um I think this is going to be my last one now. It is an app in the Shopify store. And again, this is one that empowers or supports the store owner or the, the team themselves. And it's called Kit. If you've ever had a store on Shopify then you you'll, you'll have heard of Kit you'll have seen it floating around in the app store it's being promoted everywhere it has been for a couple of years now since it's come out and what it allows you to do they it, like their slogan is or it says like it always says Kit your virtual employee and it really is kind of designed to be a little marketing assistant for you um and you can find it you can go to kitcrm.com and uh and it will basically like through text messages right so this is all through texting i'm pretty certain you can like it it can tell you it can tell you random I don't, i don't even know how to explain this like random stuff about your store like you've got um you've got uh you've got way more stock on one particular product this month Would you like me to post an ad on Facebook for that product with a sale of 20% to shift the stock and you can just reply yes please post it and it will 
create the ad for you. It will build the campaign, publish the ad, and create the sale in your Shopify store, all that kind of stuff. Um, basically take care oh, of Oh, that's for free. You. Well, it's not for free, no. no. No, no, this isn't free. I think they take a percentage of the Facebook. It's basically like, a, it's mainly a Facebook ad uh, chatbot. Um, so it can manage and create Facebook campaigns for remarketing and all that kind of stuff. But it also is directly connected to your Shopify store uh, because it literally is a Shopify app. So it can change the price for you on certain items. It can it can control anything in your Shopify store as well. So on the one hand, it can notify you of suggestions it thinks you should do in order to get more sales or it, will, it can notify you that your inventory is low, your stock's low on, on a certain thing or whatever it is. But then it can also actually go and make the changes for you as well or you can also say to it hey i want i want to run a campaign i want to run a flash sale um for all products in the collection lotions right and it will go and set up a campaign for all those products um for a flash sale now that's super powerful i think it's really cool it's got some amazing reviews on it um people just seem to really like it it's great if you're not necessarily tech savvy and you don't you haven't got a load of experience with Facebook Kit if, if that's you Kit is going to make you like a hundred times stronger than you are right now in terms of your e-commerce ability you know in terms of your marketing ability for e-commerce um, you know you may be able to get better results yourself if you are a bit more savvy with Facebook ads uh, but it's going to be probably ten times more time consuming so Really, this this kind of tool it simplifies things massively. It probably you know if you're not very good at keeping on top of this stuff, it's going to end up doing things that you'd have otherwise forgotten to do anyway. Um, and it will probably perform you know eighty percent as good as you could ever do it, even if you are pretend, uh, completely tech savvy. So, I think it's an amazing tool. It looks really cool. You can find it at kitcrm.com. Again, I'll put this stuff in the show notes. I'll put, I'll put all these different tools in the show notes so you guys can check them out. And do check them out because they're really cool. They look really interesting. A lot of them are free. Um, so Kit says here that it does work for free, but I know it takes some percentage of... I think it takes some percentage of your Facebook ads where it charges something oh, right. per thousand impressions you get or something like that. It doesn't say that anywhere, though. No. Um, <laughs> And so that works. Ping works. Uh, Ping Kit works through text, I think, and they just added it to a chat, uh, a messenger app called Ping. But I don't really know much Ping. about Ping. Um, so yeah, Kit's super cool. It looks absolutely amazing. Um, you can go and check it out at their website, but you can also check it out on the on the App Store, um, which I'd recommend doing on the, on the Shopify App Store because it's got a little bit more. I think it's a bit more. There's more information on the App Store than there is actually on their website. Um, so that's a, that's a massive application. I, in all honesty, I think that is where that's where chatbots are really going to be able to help us more than anything. Uh, it's going to allow you know it's allow it will allow us to to save massive amounts of time um, by having you know if, if a chatbot can analyze the performance of my website, at particular products, a chatbot can it could it could do anything with my store right it could rearrange the products if it thinks that I should place certain products higher on the page than others it could um, you know it could potentially even change the marketing material like the banners on my website it could it could change the prices of products it can change the descriptions of products it, it could do anything or at least give me recommendations it can analyze the data in a way that I would never be able to or at least something you know it would take me a long time to do so give me suggestions, and then potentially even act on my decisions uh, as to what to do with those suggestions. So that's where I think it's going to be really powerful. Um, helping store owners streamline their activities, you know, make their process much more efficient. Um, and yeah, the, you know, the consumer purchase, you know, the, the facilitating consumer purchases, I think it's going to be a big thing and we're going to see it grow. We're probably going to see people get sick of um, chatbots at some point because of it. Um, we, we, I think we will reach saturation again as we have with email marketing, um, but it's, it's kind of a process we've got to go through and we've got to work. We've got to see how people adopt this, how consumers adopt this and whether it's going to work for them. 
Yeah. Certainly not. All right, then. I think that about wraps it up. You got anything else you want to add on, on chatbots? No. No. I think it's a super interesting topic. If anyone out there knows anything more about chatbots or has kind of some useful insights or any ideas as to where they think this industry is going um, and where they see the future, then please head over to um, head over to the, the website where this podcast is published. You can find it at taketraction.com forward slash episode nine i believe we're on now um yes so head over there and leave uh leave us a little message in the comments section at the bottom and scroll through the transcript and put uh, a little message at the bottom we'd love to hear what you think of it because i'm sure there are people out there who know more about this than we do um so please let us know and uh yeah it'd be really great to, to hear what you guys think of this do you think that it's going to be um, that it's going to take over the world. Do you think chatbots are going to take over e-commerce? Do you think they're going to be a principal, you know, a main selling channel, e-commerce channel in the coming years? If they aren't already, perhaps you think they already are one of the main channels. So let us know what you think. Um, as always, thank you for subscribing, guys. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And thanks for tuning in. We'll catch up with you guys next week. Thanks. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye for now.